Yeah. What are you looking at there? Was like a 5.6? It says 0.56? Yep. Between 0.56 and 0 0.58? 0.56. There it is. Okay. Okay. That's voltage. Let's go find our milliamps. Well, hello there, good people. Hi, it's Jason with Green Country Agroforestry. I'm here in the front yard to talk to you a little bit about going off-grid. There's a lot of excitement out there in the homestead community about going off-grid and securing off-grid power sources. And typically, the power source that most people turn to is solar. But what if your plan for the way you want to design your homestead is to have 100% canopy, trees overhead all the time? Sunlight's not going to work there. What do you do then? Long extension cord. <laughs> this is a moisture, pH, and light tester device. Very simple. Has two probes, one aluminum, one copper. And there is no battery within this device. The way it functions, sunlight. Currently, it's set to measure moisture. You push it down into the soil. And the meter moves and shows us moisture. We switch it to the middle, and this will give us our light level. And over here on pH, if we wait a few moments, it will normalize and give us our pH reading. But there is no battery inside of this device. What's going on with this device, the main thing that makes it work, are the copper rod, the aluminum rod, and the electrolytes in the soil itself. The earth is the battery. So this device is operating at somewhere in between 0.65 or lower voltages. Somewhere between probably 0.45 and 0.65 and a very low amperage. Two dissimilar metals exchanging ions between the two of them through the electrolytic material, the soil, causes a flow of current that powers the device. So here I have a piece of aluminum tubing and a piece of copper tubing and of course a voltmeter. All we're going to do with these is come over here. Clear a spot in the dirt. Now this is something that was discovered, oh, in the fairly early 1800s in Switzerland. A scientist that was experimenting with battery cells, and he discovered that two dissimilar metals, in this particular case, will be using aluminum and copper, when inserted into the ground. Would produce a current. As they exchange ions through this moist soil. There's a lot of rocks in this, so this is problem number one with the earth battery is rocks. Okay, now we have these two two-foot rods sunk down into the soil, you know, about 18 inches or so. We're going to connect here for negative and here for positive. So this will be my cathode, this will be my anode. Just like using a regular battery, let's turn this voltmeter up to mm, 200 millivolts. Turn it on. And we'll see if we can 
reported voltage. Measuring nothing. And millivolts. Let's go to the 2000 millivolt range. There we go. With that, 806, 807 millivolts. So on volts. About 0.8 volts. 0.8 volts DC. That's not bad, folks. It's not bad at all. And we can do a check for how many amps. This is a milliamps. What is that reading? Six? Five or six? Five milliamps? It's not a lot. So very low amperage, but we actually were able to pick up eight tenths of a volt between these two rods. There's only one problem with this idea of putting two dissimilar rods down into the earth. And the, well, that's part of it. The other part is if we were to connect these in series and have another aluminum rod and another copper rod and another aluminum rod and another copper rod, so on and so forth, we wouldn't really gain any additional voltage. We gain no more additional voltage than if we were just to take the same two rods and move them farther apart. A small variation, I could probably get up to maybe a whole volt between the two, and that's about it. Anything else they added to the array would wind up shorting it out. So, no net gain. The next thing we tried was separating up these dissimilar metals into cells, just like a normal battery over here. So here we have, sunken into the earth, three one and a half inch PVC pipes, which are two feet long. These are actually two feet down into the ground. And these rods only go down one foot. So we have one foot rods, aluminum, copper, aluminum, copper, aluminum, copper, inside of these three PVC pipes insulating each cell from the other, except at the very bottom, where water can wick up underneath. And with this array, we record a different voltage, because these are wired from anode to cathode, anode to cathode, in series. Wired in series. I'm going to switch to measure volts. Turn it on. Can you get a picture of the voltmeter? Now, ideally, if you can, get the voltmeter and and the battery cells as we... Oh, I think that works. Does that work? There's a glare. Okay. So, this is the positive side here, okay. and this is the negative side here. And that is the number of volts that these three cells together produce. We're looking at about 1.7... 1.69, 1.7 something or other, 1.7 volts. Now these do have a little bit of shorting occurring down at the very bottom, two foot down, because they are open at the bottom. What if we were to take these cells and completely enclose them? Could we get a better result than 1.7 volts out of these three tubes? This is slightly better than a AA battery from that small array here. Six. Hey, there you go. What? Go. Yeah. All right. So now I've taken a six-inch piece of piece of aluminum and a six-inch piece of copper tubing, and I have attached at the very end one of these ring connectors with the insulator removed, encrypted in place. I'll solder these in later, but for right now they're holding just fine. And using the 
two and a half inch pipe cutters. I've cut off a six inch piece of PVC pipe for which we have a test plug at the end and of course the cap. Now the objective here is to take this cap and drill holes in it at the top that will allow my electrodes to pass through. Once those electrodes are in there, we'll seal them into the cap with epoxy compound and from that point on all we need to do to recharge this cell is to fill it with the mud and put the cap on. And we'll have a complete cell. Alright, to help us get that hole at the top of the cap, I'm going to use... You okay? There's a bug flying around my face. Oh. It's flying around me. I'm trying to like chew it away without moving the camera. Okay, so to help us get that quarter inch, I'm going to take just a piece of this half inch pipe and drop it in there. We'll hold the cap in place. find an appropriate size drill bit. I believe this one is 5 8 inches. It's a little bit it's a little bit big. Ouch that hurt. Alright. <laughs> Let's try that again. <laughs> Get the appropriate size drill bit. This one is 5 8 inches. It's a little bit big. It looks so much nicer when you don't pinch your thumb. Mm-hmm. Oh no, that was nine thirty seconds. We're one one quarter. Is it hot out here or is it just me? Oh, you're sick. Oh, I know. Where is that plugged in at? In here. Oh. All right. And since I've got that piece of pipe on the inside that is exactly the same diameter as the one and a half inch pipe will be once it's in position. I should be able to tap a hole. Well, the problem is it keeps on sliding around. Let's move this block. I should be able to tap a hole in there. If I can keep it from wobbling. It's all the way down there at the bottom. Vice is holding it in place. That's about as close as we're going to get it, I think. Birds. Sure. Yeah. I'm keeping so close to the edge so that way they won't touch. Yep, I want to have a good amount of separation between our metals. Between our metals, yep. Let's oh, make sure that we have that one. Yes, we forgot the epoxy, so we will not be able to fully complete our cells, but we'll get them close. Does anybody see where I put my beer? Oh yeah, I don't have any beer. That's what's wrong with the world. There is no beer. Alright. There's two beer. It's not here. Alright, in heaven there is no beer. What? That's why we drink it here. Oh. When we're gone from here, 
Our friends will be drinking all our beer. Longer. There we go. Mm. So, there we go. All I have to do is epoxy these in place, and our cell will be complete. And the metal will keep them separate, I'm sure. Yes, and the metal will help keep them separate. We'll fill this whole mud and we'll have a effective right, power cell. So right. I've tagged, yep. taken the, the newly made cell and packed it full of mud made out of a little mushroom compost and clay. And here we have our electrodes, which we will, of course, put down into so you're our be mud. Using epoxy right here. Well, I, I want to seal these at the top with epoxy so that they don't wobble, basically. And now we've got our electrodes. Oh, I see why you pulled a little mud off the top. Yeah, I had, I, you, you don't want to fill it all the way up to the top because the, the electrodes are going to take up some of that space. All right, so there we've got a completed cell. It's all sealed up, ready to go. And, you know, you can rain on this. You can, you can set it out in the and the elements and it will still function properly. Let's see if it works. I've got the meter set to volts 20V, so it'll be regular voltage. Now, let's, yeah, let's, let's, let's do it as a, as a, as a fraction. And we'll turn it on. All right, I'll prop this up against this this little dibber that I've been using here. And red is the anode, that's copper. And so, uh, aluminum is the cathode, that's aluminum. And what are we measuring here? Mm -hmm. Nothing. Nothing, okay, hang on. Something did it. What's that? Okay. How do you read that? 0.57.58. Oh, there, got the glare. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I'm having a hard time keeping my probes on. Hmm. There you go. It does do something. Oh, there you go. Put my head over there. Make a shadow. Glare. And if I can keep my probes on, 0 0.57.58. 0 0.57.58 volts. That's what we can expect out of one of these cells. Is that very good? Well, that's almost 0. 0.6 volts. So, five of these would be about three volts. Say again. Around five of these would be about three volts. I'm thinking about making an array of seven of these at 0. 0.5, say 0. 0.56, 0. 0.5, well, 0. 0.57 would be 3.5 volts. That's the equivalent to uh, one of the rechargeable batteries that you would use in your um, in your vaporizer or in your camcorder. Those fat ones. Yeah. A double stack of seven of these, one on top of the other, occupying about a foot of space, is about six volts. That's about enough to power your cell phone or recharge your cell phone. It's got to make up the connector, right? Yep. So well, now I just videos on that. now I just have to make up a few more cells like this. Of course, get them finished with the epoxy in them. Yeah. Nope. Show me a list. So a couple of weeks and uh, about seventy dollars on Amazon later, and we've got copper and aluminum tubing, one quarter inch outside diameter, fifty feet of each. I've used up some to make these. These are my electrodes, copper and aluminum electrodes. And we've inserted one of those little ring connectors into the end, crimped it off, but to make them stable, we'll need to solder them in place. And to that effect, I've got a soldering iron, got a sponge with some water. Of course, we've got our solder. I want to start out by doing something called tinning. And that is simply 
getting some solder on the iron itself. There you go. That'll hold it in place. You're just gonna need some heat. Get your hair on fire. The idea is to leave a bead of solder behind in that cavity. This solder just likes to likes to cool and set quick. Alright, now that I've got a little bead of solder in there that'll hold this together. Set that one aside. And all we're trying to do here is fill up that that cavity with solder. The gnome needs bifocals. What's he got? Okay, so uh -huh. got our our cap with our electrodes put through the holes in the top. These are the electrodes that we've already soldered. Let me get a little picture of the little soldered out there. All right, and to seal these up and to make sure that these two ends always stay slightly separated from each other, we're just going to take oh yeah or epoxy and squirt her on in there. She got epoxy. Just enough. But once we mix it, I don't know if you can see that, I'm mix it right there in the cap mm. that it will seal up inside. Consistency of glue, maybe, or oh, it runs very, very thin when it first comes out. So mix fast. Yeah, yeah, mix it fast. Okay. Bring tonsil presser. Hmm. Tongue stick, popsicle stick. Yeah, basically. All right, and then we'll just hold these in place. For about five minutes, the epoxy will set up, and it will be time. How is that going to work? What are you doing? There we go. Let's stay. Yep. It's been about a week or so since I built this particular array with seven cells. We saw the way we set those up earlier. And we're just gonna test these to see how, they, how they're doing. Uh, I have all of these wired in series with these little ring connectors that allows me to use a little screw and nuts to hold them in place. And this is our, our cathode. Hook this up positive. And this, of course, is our anode. Where do I have that backwards? <laughs> I guess we'll find out in a second. All right, so we've got those, and I've got them connected to these test leads, which will allow us to go to our DC volts. Hopefully you can see the, the numbers there on the voltmeter for DC volts. And short person, if you could, whenever you see the, the numbers, let me know what they are, okay? Mm, okay. All right. All right. I can see them now. All right. Can you see them in the camera? Yes, I can. Okay, so I'm going to connect the black to black, just like so. And 
red to red. And is there anything happening there? Yes, there is. What is our voltage? It registers 140. Uh, it fluctuates. 140. It's 135 right now. Wow. So we are, we have managed to lose some voltage off of this array since it was first first put together. When I first put this together, it we is had. Now 128. It jumped down to 127. Right. Jumped 25 now, 26. Okay. 25, 24, 23. Oh, it is jumping all over the place. Yeah. So I probably have a couple of dead cells, I think. Um, 25. 24? No, 5. Okay. Oh! What? You disconnected though. I was like, it went way down. Yep. Oh. Yep, yep, yep. Alright, so we're going to go here. What do we got? Um, 0 0.3. 0 0.3? Okay. And here? 0 0.4. 0 0.4. Alright. Here. Keep, keep it steady on there now. Um, I'm getting a lot of different reads for that. Um, Approximately what? Um, it stopped at 0.36. Alright. Okay, so... Alright. So we discovered that after a week of sitting around, our, our voltage on each individual cell has dropped from 0 0.5, 0 0.6 to around... 0.3 or 0.4. Well, that's not promising. And there's another problem with this particular setup as well. I've discovered that the amperage that's produced by these cells is not very high. Not very high at all. And the reason, of course, is because of the materials that we're using. These are very short electrodes. Very short electrodes, not much surface area, so not a whole lot of current being generated. I guess I could Give you a brief demonstration about what current and what voltage means and to do that i'm going to use a visual aid follow me all right so you can think of your electrical conductor your wire being kind of like a garden hose and imagine the electrons the electricity flowing through the wire or the conductor being like the water that flows through a garden hose well, right now i don't have the hose turned on so there is no flow at all Turning on the faucet starts the water to flow. The water is flowing through the hose and coming out of the end here, and it's flowing at a certain amount of pressure. That pressure is a fairly constant from the original supply, and you can think of the pressure in the hose as being like the voltage in a conductor. You probably don't want to do that with electricity. Now the speed that the water is coming out, this is the equivalent to amperage in a conductor. By applying resistance, we change the amperage of the current. Okay, so by applying resistance, we change the amperage or the speed of the current. The more resistance, the higher the amperage. Even on its best day, this particular array of, of, of battery cells only managed about two and a half to three milliamps of current. Your typical LED light takes 20 milliamps of current. So the speed of the current coming from this battery array was only enough to light up an LED light for a short amount of time, even though there was plenty of voltage to do it. At the end of the day, the Earth battery, although it's a nice idea, may not be what we're looking for for an off-grid power source. Tingles. Well, hey, good people, that's all I got for you today. As always, if you found the video informative or entertaining, please hit the like button. Don't forget to leave your comments down below. Share this video, subscribe to the channel, bang that notification bell. Good people, I will catch you next time.